83% of Americans say the recession has permanently changed how they allocate their money. John Gersma writes about how the financial crisis has affected consumers in his new book, Spend Shift. John, welcome. Thank you, Jill. So, uh, you are the president of Brand Asset Consulting. You've been doing research for decades now. What happened in the recession? How did we change? Well, I think you have to look at the fact that 80% of us were born after World War II. So, in all purposes, this was essentially our Great Depression. Mm -hmm. And as we started looking at the data, we saw these really significant shifts, something we refer to as a spend shift. And when you look at that, the thing that was interesting is that it actually happened across a lot of different types of people. So talk about that. Sure. 55% of all Americans are part of this movement, and it's very, very inclusive. I mean, it was interesting for us to see that from an income standpoint, you were just as likely to be wealthy or not, to be Republican or a Democrat or an Independent, or even where you lived around the country. So very much a wide group of people that are actually expressing their values through their spending. And male and female split about the same? Absolutely. Set? Interesting. So there's some stats I just want to read here. 88% of consumers say they buy less expensive brands than they used to. The lust for expensive cars down 26%. And 78% say they are happier with a more down-to-basics lifestyle. Want to be happier with less? This is, doesn't seem like American tradition here. I know, right? Well, what we're seeing is this shift where people are actually starting to reevaluate their role of happiness in the context of their consumerism. Doesn't mean we're not going to still spend, but we're seeing this shift from mindless to mindful consumption. You know, funny that you say mindless, because I remember there was a book written by a nutritionist who was talked about mindless eating. That, you know, you're sitting at a bar and you just can't help it. There's salty stuff there and you start eating. Talk about mindless spending and how that developed. Right. Well, I think what we had over the course of the last sort of 25 years was rampant access to credit that kind of created debt-fueled consumption. Mm. And I think if you go back in the history of, of American savings, for example, we saved on average 10% of our income. It wasn't until like the mid-80s that we started to move to a negative savings rate in our country. Mm -hmm. So what we're seeing in this shift is people actually starting to really focus down on how they spend their money because the money they're spending is theirs. And it has something to do with also that this is more widely accepted. You call it social sanctioned frugal lifestyle. So it's cool to be frugal? Cool Absol to be cheap now? Absolutely. Explain that. Yeah, well before, you know, if you were frugal and, and you were cheap, it was kind of frowned down upon. But we saw during the crisis people doing high-end haggling in real estate, on luxury goods. We saw some very interesting uh, trends as we traveled across the country. As people were very proud to say that I don't necessarily need, I need to feel like I have to keep up with the Joneses. Right. So now it's not so crazy to be the, the coupon lady. Now actually you get points among your friends for being that person. Absolutely. I mean, look at the success of Groupon, for mm -hmm. example, you know, $500 million business. We interviewed Andrew Mason for the book and, you know, he's created a movement. And, and it's also different about, you know, in ter terms of saying, oh, maybe I don't have to buy the fancy brand or I don't have to buy a fancy car, but people are shopping in different places. So where have they turned in, in this new chapter of American consumerism? Well, one of the things we did, Jill, is we went around the country and we spent some time in various places. One place was in Brooklyn, and we saw in our data that 55% of Americans now are open to non-national brand names. So not only sort of the, <laughs> the private label brands, but also very local brands. So a big emphasis on investing, spending your money locally in your neighborhood. Now, if you look at this, I think that there are probably some naysayers who say, yes, of course this happened in the recession. Of course it would happen this way. But when people go back to having jobs, making more money, do you think we're going to return to the old ways? Well, I'm not an economist, um, but from the consumer data that I've looked at, uh, this has been a significant shift, very different from even after sort of the, the crisis during sort of 2001. And what we're seeing is people really adjusting their values and their behaviors. And my viewpoint is I think this is a very permanent, more long-lasting trend that we're seeing. It's bared out by a lot of the data, though, outside of our own from Brand Asset Evaluator. I mean, if you look at housing values, you look at the, the major emphasis of boomers racing to repair lost wealth before retirement, and a myriad of other factors suggest that we have to be more careful with the way we spend. Now, if we can just get investors to stop investing in the really fat, fancy mutual funds and go to index funds, then I'll know that we've had a really <laughs> good substantial change for everybody. John Gersmith, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Jill. And thanks for watching.